Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna do some fun activities for Earth Day, which is coming up at the end of this week. So, we are super excited, and it's just a really great way to kind of have some fun while thinking about our planet and what we can do to help our Mother Earth kind of survive and thrive. So, the first thing we're gonna do, one of my favorite activity to just activities to do with kids is go to your recycle bin and just grab some products so i have a juice jug it's kind of a number one plastic i have an old uh, pickle jar glass and then i also have like a little box and this is some breadsticks some like cardboard type stuff and then we just paint so just a tip i love keeping my paints like this i keep on these are ikea little soap dispensers I fill them with paint and then I keep them in this acrylic Lazy Susan. It works so well for us. So what I've done is pretty much just squirt some of those paints onto a paper plate and I will leave these here with the kids and let them paint. Tip is to always have them wear smocks so that the paint does not get all over them. And of course, use your other recycled materials to lay on your surface. So this is an old piece of newspaper. Who wants the newspaper today? I do. I do. I do. Someone else is going to get the paper. I'll give you the paper because the paper doesn't have as much stuff on it. So I also have like computer paper that I printed the wrong thing on or a thing I didn't need anymore like for work. So we'll just use the back of that or that um, for that as well. So we definitely love using our recycled materials for that. And then they can just paint however they want. It's kind of open-ended, just painting all of the recyclables. So while they're doing some painting, if you have something dark like this, of course they could paint the white spaces like that, but a dark box, if that's all you've got, one of the things you can do for this is either stick post-it notes that you've, you know, you need to reuse, or you can just do post-it notes and stick them on so that it's maybe a brighter surface that the paint will show up. But you can also take, if you have scrap pieces of paper, which we have laying around, you can kind of put those on the box as well and tape it on. So then they've got another surface on that recyclable that they can kind of see their paint show up on more. So that's just another tip. If you only have dark recyclables, that's another way to use them. is this free printable that my subscribers can get from my website. If you are a subscriber, you can just download it. I'll put a link in the description. But this printable is something that will help you figure out the difference between garbage, recycle, and compost. So I have these little things and then you can cut these little circles out. And so this would be a water bottle and that would be recycled. So there are 10 for each can. There are 10 for each and you would just put them with their respective categories and sort them all out and basically teach your child why and why not certain things are recyclable and certain things are not, certain things are compost, what that even means, etc. cetera. So um, you can get this from my website and I like to laminate it so that it is nice and sturdy. You can two-sided laminate it if you want to, if you just wanna focus on one thing at a time. However, with this certain activity, I like all three to be visible so that they can sort them better and look at all the different categories. To make it a little easier to cut these little circles out so that you don't have to use scissors and cut each and every one, I do like to use this um, circle punch. I got this from a craft store, but basically these are two inches if you're gonna buy one. This one's one and a half here, but I do have a two inch one as well. So these are two inch ones that you would need for this activity. It also, this printable comes with a key so that you can see, you know, what the trash items are, recycle and compost. And if you can't tell like what a certain thing is, for example, this one kind of looks funny in there, but that's actually nut shells, shells of nuts. So if you didn't know that just by looking at the picture, I do have a key that you can kind of see and that would be a compost item there. So this is free to you if you are a subscriber. You also can purchase it if you do not want to subscribe, but... This is free for subscribers, so I'll put the link in my description and you can go ahead and download that.
For the next activity, we're gonna make these cute little boats and they really do float, which makes them really fun. And these are just made out of materials that you already probably have around your house. So we're gonna need a sponge, a kitchen sponge, used or not used, whichever you prefer. If you're using a used one, um, I would just run it through the dishwasher cycle to clean and sanitize it, squeeze the water out, let it dry, and then you can use it. You're also gonna need some duct tape. They sell duct tape and some really cool patterns and some really cool colors. These are like holographic ones. I would recommend fun colors for this project. It'll just make your boats a little bit more, you know, fun, but you can use whatever you have on hand. You'll also need a popsicle stick as well as some scissors and an X-Acto knife or craft knife, whatever you want to call it. You could use a mat for that as well. And if you want to color the mast and make it more colorful, some markers would also be helpful. So what I'm going to do, and as the parent, um, as you're helping them, my five-year-old here is gonna be able to do more on her own than my two-year-old. So what I'm gonna do while I'm kind of doing things for my two-year-old is I'm gonna have her color the popsicle stick mast. That way she has something to do to occupy her while I get her boat started for her. So, you wanna get going coloring on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can pick your all your color markers. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Isabel and I here, we are going to make our, hold on honey, we're gonna make our sponges into a boat shape. So to do that, we're just going, this is a rectangle boat, we're going to just cut off some of the sides here to make a point. It does not have to be a lot, and actually you really could skip this step if you wanted, but if you just want it to look more boat shaped, then you can do this. If you wanna make sure it's completely even, you could use a ruler and you know line out the spaces there, but it isn't really necessary. So you can go ahead and cut your boat sides. Now you can see here, I've got kind of like a pointed shape. And you can see here, Isabel, she cut hers kind of a little bit different of a shape than mine and that's okay it's her boat they can be different it doesn't have to be exact so now we're going to move on to the sail and the sail is going to be made out of duct tape because it is waterproof so if these topple over eventually they will when you have little kids playing with them then these are waterproof and it'll still be able to float so what we're going to do is we're going to take the duct tape and lay it out and we're just gonna kind of do it as long as the sponge is. So I'm gonna just roughly measure that and then pull off a piece here or just use your scissors if it's hard. And get a piece there and just lay it out flat here. Then we're gonna take another piece roughly the same length and overlap it with this first piece. Kind of like so, so that it's overlapping there. You want the final shape to be about as long as the sponge and about as wide as the sponge. So for me, two pieces is fine. And then what we're gonna do is take duct tape again. Can I after you? And we're gonna put it sticky side to sticky side. That way you don't have a boat that is sticky. So we're just gonna cover up the stickiness of the other side. So we're gonna put it the opposite way, right on top of each other. You don't have to line them up exactly because we will trim these in a minute, but you do want it kind of, you know, roughly on top of there. So we want a white sail this time. We're gonna add some decoration in a minute, but we want the base of this one to be white. So that is why I'm using all white. You could do four different colors here. You could do two different colors. You know, you can do this however you wish. It's a look. But Juliana requested all white for the base. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now that we have the rough shape of the sail, you can use your scissors or your knife and just trim it to make a basic square shape, rectangle shape, I guess, that does not have any <laughs> sticky parts on it. Oh, thanks. So I'll take those off and then the rest is not sticky, so we're good there. So the next thing I'm gonna do, she wanted blue. To make the stripes, I'm going to rip this kind of down the middle here. And then we have some thinner pieces. You could also use washi tape or something. And then just gonna lay them roughly here to make some stripes in my sail. <laughs> I 
can do this. Can I have these pinks, please? So and in general, Isabel was able to do the first two strips overlapping here, but she did want a little bit of help to put the other side on top of that. So she needed a little help with that. And then I pre-cut some of these more decorative strips so that she can decorate, you know, however, whichever designs she wants on here. So you can kind of pre-put some of that there so that they have more ability to do what they want to decorate these sails as well. on both sides. So now the pieces that we have should be your boat, your sail, mm -hmm. and your decorated popsicle stick or not decorated popsicle stick. This will be the mast. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sponge. If it has two sides, like the porousy side and then the scrubber side, I like to use the scrubber side up. I think it floats better that way. So we're gonna take this and with your Whoa. craft knife, Juliana, would you like to help me? Okay. You put your hand on mine real quick. And we'll use this, okay? We're gonna put a small little incision right in the middle of the scrubber part of this boat. So a small little incision, nice and deep. And that is where our popsicle stick is now going to fit in. Do you wanna put the popsicle stick right in that? Perfect. Okay, so you'll have that. I just like to get that done first, but then you're gonna take it out and you're going to attach it to the popsicle stick. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to find the middle of your sail and you can do that just by folding it kind of in half and marking the middle. So my middle is right about here and somewhere near the top and somewhere near the bottom, you're going to use your X-Acto knife again. I would recommend the parent doing this part. Um, just put a little slit in those two parts of the sail so that the popsicle could stick can be threaded through and i used this little piece of cardboard here as a backing so that i didn't um, scratch up my table with a knife so then we're just going to stick the popsicle through the bottom and back up through the top and so you can see then i have my sail you can do this either way i'll probably actually put this one the other way so that the design is more on the front so then you have that on there. So then you can scrunch up your sail to make it look like however you want it to look on your craft stick. I'm gonna probably put it like something like that. But to get it to stay in that position, what you can do is take a really thin piece of duct tape here and just put it around your sail and your craft stick where you don't want it to go. So here I put it just above, I kind of folded the flap down, put it just above there. Now it shouldn't move past there. And then this one, I'll kind of scrunch it up again. So I'm gonna put another piece of tape like right here. That way it won't go straight. This tape will kind of stop it from what it's doing. So I'll wrap another piece right there. And then I'll have my sail. And I lost my little helper, but then we'll just put that craft stick right in there. And her boat is complete. So as you can see, they can float and the kids can play with them. She's putting little figurines on hers even, but I do just wanna caution you, if your boat comes out kinda of like this one, the one that had more sponge taken off of it, it may be a little top heavy or side heavy. So this one actually doesn't really float so well. It kind of falls over as soon as it's in the water. Still fun to play with, but not quite as fun as the ones that actually stay afloat. So just a caution there to not cut off quite so much as Isabel did here. Might be better if you're working with the kids to really line it with pencil so they know where to cut. All right, guys, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.